Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Hope you're doing well. Today I want to touch base back on this idea of the permit pass and are you playing or are you not? I have said that I was going to, but now it's actually happening. And so I want to show you a few of my results and compare that to what I'm anecdotally experiencing in the past seasons. And then I want to read a couple comments which are pointing towards your guys' sentiment. I know that this is a mixed bag. Like I think some of you hate that this change is present. And there's one comment that I guess drives that point that I want to touch on. And there's others who are kind of cautiously watching this. So I want to just, it's a bit of a, this is, this video is intended to be a bit of a finger on the pulse to see how the community seems to be responding. And, um, and yeah, it'll be a shorter video. My name is Dwayne Cunningham. I go by Infidel 1258. You can just call me 12. And I do review the comment section regularly. So get in there, drop your thoughts or your criticisms even. I love that. It helps drive content. It helps me understand what you guys are interested in about. So again, we are touching the comment section today. And also one more thing I just want to say, for those of you who are interested, this is like a personal update. Uh, my adoption of a four-year-old boy is going quite well. Gregory is doing great. He's been transitioning into our house and, um, and it's been wonderful. He had one sleepover the other day. It was awesome. And he, we got more sleepovers to come this week and next. July 2nd is the big day where he's officially with us. So <clears throat> big changes coming. Just wanted to let you know. All right, let's get back to the video. So this permit pass, how, what are we thinking? I, I know some of you hate the idea of it on the face of it. You just hate the idea that they would charge us anything extra to play this game. And that's what Banana says. He says, I will not pay for the pass. I sold my Xbox token and I will not pay the fees on principle. I don't agree with any of these changes that they've been making. And I'm sure he's not the only one. Let's see here, Jeremiah. I haven't read this one yet, but let's see. I wasn't happy about pay, having to pay at first, but since I didn't want to pay for more than one account, I stopped delegating and paying for the Splinter Mate bot for more than one account. So now my account is stronger. Plus I'm only using one account for the bot saves me money. So I can just use that one pass, use that money to put it on the pass. I guess he's what he's saying. We probably earn enough SPS each season to cover the cost. I think this is something I want to touch on today. Will, will we or will we not? Oscu says, who's a friend of the channel and one of the time and attention guys, I bought the permit and I will watch my season earnings closely. Though I have to say that I have a pretty strong deck and end up around 46.50 rating each end of season. I expect not po net positive for me, to be honest. I agree. In fact, last season I finished almost exact same place as you, 4640, 4650, something like that, right around there. So I agree. But let's go to the data, uh, and we'll read a couple more comments too. But let's go to the data and see what I'm seeing. You guys have your anecdotal experience, and you absolutely should track that. Wait a second. Why do I have 58 energy? Okay, good. You know how sometimes the 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 energy doesn't if you open the window and leave it open and then you're like wait a second i didn't leave anyways it is it is exhausted i have eight energy so let's look at this data um these are my recent battles eight hours ago let's see my last win and usually at this point in the season two 2.5 sps per win pretty normal for me where i be where i'm currently located and yesterday at least i played one battle myself and i won it and i got four and a half or might have been five sps so anecdote with that one example that's i think i think it's double literally double now i want to see what we get here because there is some settling like at the beginning of the season if you don't know this one of the factors that matter as to how much sps you get per battle is how many games are being played on the day because the number of days sorry the number of battles per day is is then the um is used to calculate how much sps per battle because there's only so much sps per day and so as a result of that consideration what i what i might be noticing right now is that there are fewer players playing in the opening day or two days of the season, which is certainly a possibility needs to be um, considered. And if that's what I'm measuring, if my SPS per win has doubled because of solely fewer players playing for the first 48 hours of the season, that is not as important as if, as if my SPS is up because of the new permit pass and what that means for how many game accounts are playing. I hope you see that. So I'm, I'm trying to say, I don't know how reliable this data is, 
But look at on this battle, I got 4.5 SPS. And again, yesterday, I believe my win was 4.5 SPS, maybe maybe a little more. And I usually get two, two and a half SPS at this time. In some situations with all the sort of bonuses, I might get three. So four and a half is a big increase. And I was expecting maybe in that four SPS, five SPS range per win. And this is big, man. This is big in wild champion, low champion. This is a big deal. There's been so many accounts, 75,000 accounts that were playing this, and they're all striving after the same pool of SPS. And now the doubling of SPS contribution or of stake and the impact of that has helped me because I had more SPS than I quote unquote needed. And then secondly, there definitely are a certain number of accounts who've closed up shop. We saw some of those comments there. And so it looks to me like I'm getting about 50% more SPS than I would have been otherwise. And this needs to be tracked more than just a couple battles. I need to see this across. But what I'm hoping you're seeing here in this conversation is a thoughtful process that you can walk to ascertain whether or not there's value here for you. Because what we saw with that comment from Bananas, he says he'll not pay for the Prima Pass because on principle, and I totally understand where that sort of mindset comes from. But what I'm trying to invite is a pushback on that emotional response. Not trying to be rude, but it does feel emotional, Bananas. Like you're saying just on principle, you're going to reject it. And I say to you, set aside principle. Set aside what's right, wrong, you know, what you think is good or bad. And just ask the simpler question, is this going to help me? Will I get more money after I buy a cheap pass or not? And it's worth saying that I think the answer is yes. Because let's say I actually bought my permanent pass using vouchers. Vouchers are given to me through my daily staking of SPS. If you have a, a good sized bag of SPS, 200,000 or more, your vouchers are easily coming in for free. Like, so you're getting the vouchers regardless. So it's not even really $2 a season for this permit pass because it's 40 vouchers and those vouchers are about two cents each, but we're talking 80 cents, which is what I paid yesterday to buy this permit pass. 80 cents were the vouchers that were given to me for free. So did I really pay anything? And by the way, now that I'm playing the game, I'm getting a 50% increase in the amount of SPS that I would have otherwise. So do you start to see how, if you just set aside, if you get caught up in like, I'm gonna say no to something because it feels unfair, and you're setting aside the logic of the zeros and ones, look, I'm actually getting more money now than I was yesterday. I should be gr gl grateful for that. I should be glad for that. I should see this as a net gain to me, even if it's not a net gain to everyone. And navigating those sorts of moments is part of what I hope my channel is gonna offer to you. Because I actually believe that there's ways you can approach this game where you're so committed, whether it's to the idea that Splinter Lens is going to have a moon mission, where you stop thinking about the, the core of what we talk about so often, which is whether this game is fun and has a future. So I am a speculator in Splinter Lens, but I first and foremost believe that it's, this game is fun and has, has a future. So I'm a speculator, but I'm an investor and I'm a gamer. And that combination makes me more committed, stronger and knowledgeable than maybe the average bear. And so for if you carry that package, maybe that package of, of, of sort of commitment to this thing, then, it, then I think you find you go into deeper waters like intellectually with this stuff. It's not just, I'm gonna buy SPS because it's cheap and I think it's gonna go up. It's this more broad conversation around, I think the game is entertaining and I think the, they're heading in the generally right direction with design and development. And so then from that place, if, if, if this new change allows me to get more SPS in my pocket, I am for it. This is something we all can and should review for ourselves. Because th specifically with the permapass, one, are you earning enough vouchers? Are you earning enough vouchers for free just by staking SPS that you get this for free? If so, I mean, let that be, you know, let's be, let's take advantage of that reality. You're already getting the vouchers. Second of all, the vouchers make the price lower in and of itself, which is by another way, making it cheaper. And so then it makes it even easier to pay off that cost. If it's 80 cents this season for me to buy that permit pass using vouchers that were actually given to me 
you might say it's free entirely, or you might go ahead and say, well, they still have a value. So 80 cents worth of vouchers. Okay, fine. Let's look at it that way. And you know, based on two and a half SPS per, I earned four and a half SPS. And if we said I get, usually get two and a half, we're two SPS in the green per win. And if we get 10 to 12 wins, call it 12 wins a day, that's half of my games are wins. Then I'm, then I should get another 24 SPS a day, 24 SPS a day. It isn't a penny now anymore, is it? I've already done this math and you guys have done this math, but I'm inviting you to think about it this way. You know, we're well below a penny, but still 24 SPS is something like 20 cents, even at this price point, 20 cents a day, four days of, of that pays for my pass. And by the way, my, my, my vouchers are free. So this is the thought process. This is the way I try to make it. I do try to look at the fundamentals. I do try and hear the sentiment. I do try and feel my own sort of like if I have emotions about this, the, you know, a decision or one way or another, but I don't let those govern my choices. Ultimately, my ultimate decisions are based on the actual, I have an investor part of my mind. I have a uh, speculator part and I have a gamer part. And the speculator is the more risky, like I buy SPS because it's so cheap and I think it could go moon. The investor is that long-term commitment because of the fundamentals work. The gamer is like, I'm just here to enjoy a process that I, that I will participate in for years to come and have already participated in for years to come or years gone by. And so look, maybe look at it in that direction. If you're on the fence or if you're one of these people who are quite critical about these new changes, I would encourage you maybe to think about it that way. I'm going to read one more comment from Bronze Dragon. Shout out to Bronze Dragon. He did a great video, by the way, recently talking about the potential new proposal from Matt to, uh, uh, Matt to Castles Clark and talking about, you know what? That might need to be a separate video, but maybe go check out the Bronze Dragon's channel and see what you see over there because there's a cool video there. Uh, Bronze Dragon says, I have paid to play for my primary and secondary accounts in Wild. He wasn't uh, initially sure if he was going to do his secondary account, so he's gone a bit deeper than maybe he originally thought. And so he says, thus far I have dropped from Champ 2 to Diamond 1, which was expected. I'm actually making less SPS in Glint now, and not encountering any positive effects from the changes. Interesting. My secondary account will most likely not remain active after the season as it is earning way less to the point that the value in glint received by daily play is much less than the overall charge for playing. Okay. What's going on there? I'm trying to wrap my head around that comment. I wonder if it's the drop in league that's solely responsible for your, your change in results, but then why would your, I don't understand why you dropped in league so dramatically. I guess that's because there's fewer lower level accounts that you're running into or not running into. And so you have less sort of weak players to play against. Maybe regardless, this sort of note is deeply valuable because it ends up pointing as another type of anecdote in the direction of saying, no, I'm not going to do that now. Maybe there's some happy medium where Bronze Dragon has talked about putting everything together. And he even says it here. My secondary account will most likely no longer remain active after the season, which I guess would mean he would put them together. I will remain playing in wild with my primary account for at least one more season just to watch the game. The changes occur and see where the dust settles. But as for now, I'm playing the season fee. I'm paying the season fee and making less than what I was before. So I don't know what the answer is going to be for you individually. I know what I'm experiencing and I know what some of these other people are experiencing. And we all should think about this from a, that sort of, there's room to be analytical here. There's space and data that you can actually compile to make a wise decision. It isn't just an emotional and it isn't just a zeros and ones logical. It's something in between where that gamer and that speculator come together to help you make that decision. So I hope you are thinking about it in the same way, because I think that path is going to lead you to the best result. At least it has for me in the past, and I, I'm hopeful that that sort of approach will continue to benefit for me moving forward. If that sounds interesting, and if you watch the video to the end, I would encourage you to drop that like if you haven't already, and to subscribe to the channel for more Splinterlands or blockchain-based video game content, or even that personal stuff where I tell you a bit about my family or my faith, because I love that stuff too. I'm, uh, I'm interested in three things, family, finance, and faith, and, uh, and that's what you're going to get if you stick around. So if that sounds good, 
like, and sub. Have an amazing day, guys. God bless. Bye for now.